Hey everyone, welcome back to AshDev. Today we're diving into a topic that might just change how you write code in Unity. Ever felt like you're writing more code than necessary for simple tasks? You're manually resetting component values, or you're using static utility classes to add functionality to Unity's Vector3 or Transform types. Like in our last series on building a car controller, we came across a situation where we wanted to adjust just the Y rotation of our car's wheels. This code, while effective, is a mouthful, right? We're manipulating the transform, but have to restate parts we're not even changing. It works, but we all know there's got to be a better way to handle these common tasks. Meet extension methods that let you extend existing classes or structs without modifying their source code or inheriting from them. Imagine being able to add new functionality to Unity's core types as if they were methods you wrote yourself. Before moving ahead, all these YouTube tutorial projects will be present on our Discord server for two weeks after the release of the video. So this project is also available now. In case you're watching this video after two weeks, you can get all the projects from our Patreon, which will also help us make more of these awesome, high-quality tutorials. And also subscribe to our channel and turn the notification on so that you don't miss the future projects. Now, let's create a simple extension method together. Say we're tired of resetting transform positions the long way. Here's a neat shortcut. Create a new script for extensions and create a namespace extensions in it so that it can be accessed in any other script by just using this namespace. Then in it, define the class as static and remove mono behavior and in it create the static function reset transform with a parameter of this modifier. The main difference between them and normal method is that the first parameter uses the this modifier followed by the type you're extending, that is transform, and then set the position to vector 3.0, rotations to quaternion.identity, and scale to vector 3.1. Just like that, you've added a reset position method to every transform in your project. Use it by calling transform.resetPosition, and your transform's position is reset. Elegant, isn't it? Next, let's create an extension method for changing a value of a specific axis of the vector 3 while leaving others unchanged. Create a setX function similar to resetTransform function, but unlike resetTransform function, this will return a vector 3. Take this vector 3, vector, as the first parameter and the x value val as the second parameter. Then in it, return a new vector whose x value is equal to val and rest of the values remains unchanged, and then make similar functions for the y and z axes. And now, we can easily change value in one axis only, while leaving the others unchanged. Now swap the old logic with this function, and it will work same as before, but with a lot less code. Let's discuss few more common use extensions you can use in your projects. First, add or get component. If you want some component, regardless of whether the requested component is attached or not, then this function is the way to go. In this, firstly, try to get the required component of a given type T, and then check if it's null. And based on that, add the required component and return it. Second, set parent as origin. If you want to set some transform as parent to another, and then reset its local transform, then this function is really handy. Create the function, then take transform as first parameter, whom you want to make the child, then take the transform parent as second parameter, whom you want to set the parent, then in it set the transform.parent to parent, and then reset its transform. Third, get random item. To get any random item from some array, in this simply generate an index for the list and then return the corresponding item. Fourth, set layer recursively. To set the layer of a game object, including all of its children, take game object as first parameter, then take the desired layer as second and then in it. Firstly set the game object's layer to layer, and then using for each loop, set the layer of its children too, by using the same function. Fifth, rotate about an axis. For rotating some transform about a specific axis. Take the desired axis, then the desired angle. This is to be done using the transform.rotation, which will be equal to quaternion.angleAxis. Pass the angle and axis, then multiply it with the transform.rotation to have a new rotation. And now you have it. 
a powerful way to make your code cleaner and more efficient. Thanks for watching. If you have any suggestions for future video topics, please drop them in the comments section. Goodbye.